In my 14 year career thus far, there are many things that I'm really proud of, but there's one secret that I've long been ashamed of and I've never shared with anyone except for my closest friends and family. Now I wanna share it with you because I think it will do some good. I failed my orals examination. Why, after all these years, do I feel like it's time to share this information with those of you who are in graduate school and those of you who are advising graduate students? After all of these years of holding this secret inside, I realized that it would probably do more good to just put it out in the light of day, to ask myself why is it I failed on my first attempt at the milestone experience of the orals exam, and what advice I have to give to students who are preparing for the exam and for their advisors. So let's jump into this somewhat embarrassing but important discussion. So why did I fail orals on my first try? Well, first of all, it wasn't because I didn't read. Like so many of you who are preparing for orals right now, I was reading five, six, seven books a week from morning to night. There was one time I was working in the Hungarian pastry shop cafe, my cafe of choice up by Columbia. I had drank so much coffee that my heart was racing and I was actually starting to get worried. I decided to close the books for that night, but before I left, I texted a friend of mine and said, I'm not feeling so well. I'm gonna walk home and I'll text you when I get there. If you don't hear from me between now and then, please come looking for me somewhere on Amsterdam Avenue between the cafe and my apartment on 120th. So after all of that reading, all of that preparation, why did things go badly? The reason is, I didn't understand what the orals examination was actually examining. I thought, like many first-generation students, but also others, that the orals examination is a test of knowledge, of retention of the material that I was reading. And I was completely wrong. The orals examination is not a test of whether you have read and understood the articles and books that you needed to read. The orals examination is a test of knowledge under pressure. It is a performance, and the only way to truly prepare for it is to understand this performative quality and actually to practice with that in mind. What is this performance? What am I talking about? What is orals really for? Well, some people who are far more cynical than me would describe it as a kind of hazing ritual, a kind of pointless gauntlet that we make students run through as part of this ritual. This isn't true. Now that I have the benefit of hindsight over my own career, I realize that there is a specific event, a major event, in our careers that the orals examination is almost a carbon copy of. And this is the Q&A period during your job talk. And of course, there are many other benefits to the orals exam. You develop a command of different literatures that will constantly serve you in your teaching, in your writing, in your research. But what I'm talking about specifically is not the reading and note-taking process, but what happens inside the examination room during that two-hour exam. Because remember, when you teach or when you write a book, there is never a moment in which someone looks at you and asks you a question and says, answer this in six minutes or you're fired. That doesn't happen. In research and writing, you have time to go over your notes, to check all of your facts, to study the literature. In teaching, you have months to prepare syllabi and lectures. But in the orals exam, there is this weird stress uh, and time consideration that is not really a factor in teaching or research. So the Q&A period of your job talk, goes without saying, is the period that follows the scripted portion of your presentation to the department or the program where you're trying to get a job. The idea is there is a room full of faculty and postdoc and graduate students and others coming from a variety of fields 
and they can ask you any question they damn please. You won't know what the question is, you won't know where it's coming from, and yet getting that job depends on how well you answer this sequence of questions. Sound familiar? And what's more is that you have to answer this barrage of questions in a highly structured and ideally short period of time. During a Q&A for a job talk, you do not want to be giving 10-minute answers because you're going to run out of time and you're going to really frustrate and piss off all of the people who are waiting in the queue to hear you think and hear you respond to their questions. So this is the performance I'm talking about. Because in a job talk Q&A, there's no doubt that you know your research. There's no doubt that you have actually thought a great deal about it. And so in theory, the Q&A should be really simple. And yet it's not. Now I love Q&As. They're my favorite part of every talk that I give. But Q&As are really stressful. You can get major abstract questions and you are in the hot seat in a condition of stress and so much is riding on what you say. Well, this is exactly what orals is like, at least in my experience. You're not in a room with 50 people, you're in a room with maybe four or five, typically. And of course, you're not calling on people. Each examiner has a specific period of time that they get to ask you questions in. But just like a job talk Q&A, the questions can be of any magnitude, of any scale, and so much is riding on your ability to answer them substantively, but also briefly. So learn from my mistake. The orals examination is not a sadistic ritual, but neither is it a test of just your general comprehension of hundreds and hundreds of books and articles. It is a particular kind of performance in which you are being tested for your ability to summon material, organize it, deliver it in a highly condensed period of time while under stress. And there is a part of our career that is a direct copy of that experience, and this is the Job Talk Q&A. The second reason I think I failed in my first attempt at the orals exam was because of a kind of cognitive dissonance that was being generated um, on the one hand by this sense of anxiety in myself and this, this you know, knowledge that, wow, this is a really important exam, so much is riding on it. But then on the other hand, this persistent chorus of people, fellow graduate students who are more senior than me, but also my own professors, telling me not to worry, you'll pass. This really confused me. If this thing is so stressful, and if it's an exam that it requires one full year of an ungodly amount of work to pass, how in the world is everyone telling me that, don't worry, you'll pass? Some people go so far as to say, it's just a conversation. Bullshit. The orals examination is not a conversation, and you can fail. I say that not to scare you and not to be a bummer, but to be at least one voice in your world who is telling you the truth. Not everyone passes. Just because you have done the reading doesn't mean you pass. Just because you're smart doesn't mean you'll pass. Just because you have a great dissertation topic doesn't mean you'll pass. I really wish that someone had sat me down and told me this. This chorus of lies was so consistent that the night I failed orals, I was walking up the street with a friend of mine, and on the other side of the street was a senior colleague, a fellow student, but someone older than me, further along in the program. And he yelled out across the street, how'd it go? I was totally broken and despondent at that point, but I decided to answer him with full volume. I failed. He laughed. <laughs> yeah, right. And then kept walking down the street in the opposite direction. If my heart had already sunk through the floor, it was now somewhere in the lower recesses of hell. It's like, oh my God, I failed the unfailable exam. It's all over. Right after the exam ended and right after I got the news, I walked home like a zombie. I was all dressed up nice. I had dress shoes on. I unlocked the door to my apartment. I just trudged into my bedroom and then just fell flat on my bed and I didn't move until the sun set. 
I was so confident, even though I was confused, that I would pass that prior to the exam, I invited all of my friends to have a beer with me that night to celebrate. Well, after I failed, I had to write back to all of them to tell them not to come. I didn't mention why, I just said, don't come. One friend reached out, and I think suspected that there was something up. Is everything okay? And I said, no, it's not okay. Now, I don't want to shirk responsibility. I don't want to pretend like I'm not the sort of master of my own fate in this. I'm the one who failed the exam. It wasn't my advisors who failed it for me. It wasn't my senior colleagues and fellow students. I'm the one who failed. But at the same time, I would be lying if I just took that responsibility 100% on my shoulders and just continued to beat myself over the head. The point here is, is that as students, so many of us prepare incorrectly for the exam because we really don't know what the exam is about. So if I have to be that person in your life, I'm okay with it. Let me be the first to tell you that the orals examination is not a conversation. It is not something that everybody passes. People even added all of these layers to the story. They would say, oh, when you leave the examination, you're going to think you failed, but you passed. So when I actually left the exam thinking to myself, I think I failed, then I remembered all of this nonsense advice that I got. And I thought, well, I feel like I failed, so I guess I passed. This brings us to the third reason that I failed my first attempt at orals and some advice that I have for any students out there, and anyone advising students. Because of this unending barrage of statements about how orals is a conversation, everybody passes, don't worry about it, I never actually practiced the exam the way that the exam was going to happen. It's like I was a swimmer preparing for the Olympics, practicing in a kiddie pool. The point here is, like every other profession and field of arts understands, you need to practice at least a few times in precisely the way that the main event is going to happen when it comes. And this takes a few different shapes. For one thing, when you are meeting with faculty members who are going to serve as your examiners, try your best to get them to offer you mock exams. If they sit back in their chair and if they're sipping coffee and if they're the ones talking about how don't worry this is an informal conversation, you need to figure out strategies to get them out of that habit and to actually show you what it's going to be like. I'll say it right here, I think it is completely irresponsible for advisors to describe the orals examination as a conversation. It isn't. It's a highly stressful, high stakes, power asymmetric event that requires serious preparation. And so examiners don't do this out of malice. They're trying to do something nice for you. They're trying to make you not worry, not stress out. But in the long run, it doesn't actually help you when you believe them. Because then the day actually arrives and you walk into the room and you suddenly realize in that moment, oh shit, this is not a conversation. This is not an informal chat. What is this? I don't know. So in order to practice the exam the way the exam will really be, you need a partner in your mentors, in your examiners. Just explain to them, I'm really nervous about this. I would really like to practice the way the exam will really be. So if the exam is 20 minutes long, can we please set a timer? If I'm allowed to have pen and paper, I'd like to use pen and paper. I'd like to stay in character as much of the time as possible. And then, of course, step out of character so that I can understand what I did well and what I need to improve. Now, if all of this in character, out of character stuff sounds strange to you, I'm just going to say it again. The orals exam is a performance. It is not a test of knowledge or intelligence. It is the test of a particular performance of knowledge under unique conditions of stress. The other thing that you can do is when a friend or a partner or someone tries to ease your mind and tell you, don't worry, everybody passes and all of that stuff, either patiently sit that person down and say, 
I know you're trying to help me, I know you're trying to calm me down, but it doesn't actually help. So let's keep this realistic. Or if they just keep coming at you with this kind of useless advice, I would take a vacation from that particular relationship until after the exam is over. And for your part, you want to make sure that you use every opportunity not only to read and take notes on the items on your list, that's essential, that's foundational, but to also delegate time in your schedule to drilling and practicing the way that the exam will actually be. I've gone ahead and I've made a number of videos all about the orals exam process. I'll be linking them in the description below and you're gonna see them in the cards. So be sure to watch those videos as soon as you can. I go over what the very first words out of your mouth should be for every answer you give. I walk through the four archetypal questions that show up over and over and over again in every examination, regardless of the field you're in. And I walk you through a kind of training regimen so that you can more efficiently and effectively prepare for the big day. So all of these videos are in the description below and I seriously encourage you to watch them all start to finish. Now the story has a happy ending. After that awful day, that seriously, to this day when I think about I feel a kind of ache, a kind of shame, I retook the exam or the specific portion of the exam that I needed to do and I smoked it. I had all of the literature at my command I had condensed them into these substantive six-minute answers. I was thinking on the fly. I was doing the performance. I remember my examiners being like, oh, wow, you know, why didn't you do this before? I wanted to leap out of my chair. I didn't, but I wanted to say because I had no idea what this examination was actually going to be. If you know what an exam is actually going to be like and actually what it's for, it makes the preparation process so much better. It's still the hardest thing that you're gonna do in grad school prior to the job search, but the wonderful thing is that if you prepare correctly, the orals exam preparation process will be what it is supposed to be, a tremendous and wonderful period in your education that you never get to experience again. All right, well, there you have it. It feels kind of good to get that off my chest, and it also feels pretty scary. If you found this helpful, please consider sharing this video, maybe with your own advisor, maybe with a student who is going through the orals exam process. Give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next episode.